going on everybody so this is episode 12 of the lunch break you're probably thinking that's not Alex you're right um, I'm Branson and I typically do some of the conventional side of things um, but Alex today asked me to go over something a little bit different something that let's just say he's not built for um, and that's fly fishing off <laughs> it's fly fishing off of a paddleboard um, when we talked about the idea of this episode he brought up paddleboard fishing, and it's something that I, I do a lot of. I live um, in the upper Tampa Bay area, Safety Harbor to be exact, and around there, it's really, really good for paddleboard fishing because of just kind of the way it's set up, and it's easy to. There's a lot of places you can put in the paddleboard, and he wanted me to kind of go over the, the differences, essentially, of what that is, because there is a big difference from being on a paddleboard to wading to being on a boat, of course, yes, you're, you're still fishing at the end of the day, but it, it's, it's a lot different in terms of, I, I would say, the style, because there's three main things that, that I think of whenever, whenever anybody asks me, like, hey, what, what's, what is it all about when it comes to paddleboard fishing? Well, there's three things, and that's kind of what we're going to go over today. So it's simplicity or the ease of it. You, you want to have essentially a setup that makes it easy for you. You don't have a lot of surface area on a paddleboard, of course, that, which is kind of like wading. You know, when, when you wade, you don't really want to bring a lot of stuff with you. And in paddleboard, uh, fly fishing is pretty much the same thing. You want to make it as easy as possible on you. And I've kind of created a, 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 a way to do that for myself and for a lot of other people. I've, I've shown them how to do it, too. Any housekeeping to do? Any, any shop stuff? New Year, any sale, anything like that? I was going to go over that, yes. Before the intro, you're, you're getting a little ahead of yourself, Adam. I'm sorry. It's, it's okay. I wanted to do the intro um, on the paddleboard fishing. But the, the second thing would be everything's going to get wet. Um, you are going to, yeah, whoa. Um, everything that you're going to bring on that paddleboard is going to get wet. I don't care how high up on the board you put it. I don't care what you put it in. Things are going to get wet. And so you want to have pretty much everything you have on the board be waterproof um sealed reels pliers bags all that stuff you want it to be waterproof and then the third is you want to be quiet um you don't want to make a lot of noise and that's honestly like that's like a learning curve for sure like you just learn how to put your feet and stuff like that in places we'll get into that a little bit more but since adam brought it up we'll go into it now it's a new year here at tailwater outfitters of course and that means we got a lot of cool things going on Yes, but it's a newer er year because we're in the new shop, you know. It's it's January, what's today? The third? My watch only tells time. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it's the third, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it is the third. Um, so we've already had a few days into the new year at the new shop, and it's been great. Um, we have a lot of stuff going on. We are setting up the schedule for all of the events and things that we plan on doing this year, and I, I will say I'm really excited about it. we got a lot of cool opportunities for – People that like to offshore fish, that like to fly fish, that like to inshore fish, everything. And we're gonna we're gonna do some pretty cool stuff that I'm excited about. We'll be announcing that soon once we get all of the dates set up. That's one thing to keep in mind and, and keep keep looking out for. Um, the other thing though, we are doing a sale on shoes. Uh, so a few brands in the shop, Sims, Vans, Extra Tough, we're doing we're doing a sale online and in store. Um, I guess I'll, I'll say it. I don't know if I'll get in trouble. We're doing 25% off um, select shoes. So it's a good opportunity to get a new pair of Vans for cheap, a pair of extra toughs or some Sims that you, you need some waders or stuff like that, waiting boots at a, at a cheap price. 
Um, so that's what we got going on in the shop, which is which is awesome. And then of course the the events and some classes and things like that, casting clinics possibly that we're going to be doing. Um, so keep keep uh, keep a lookout for that stuff. It's it's going to be fun. I'm really looking forward to it. But let's get back to the fun stuff. So paddle boarding, paddle boarding, fly fishing. Uh, it's probably my I would say my favorite thing to do right now because it's it's easy. I can get out and do it quickly, and it's something that you just kind of get up and go. So if you only have like a few hours, that's that's kind of why I like it because it's easy. So let's first get into the the board that I that I use. We here at Tailwater Outfitters carry boat boards, and I will say this: they are the best boards out there in my opinion. And I'm not saying that just because we sell them. I've had boat boards for a very long time probably I would say eight years before we got them in the shop, and it's my favorite board by far. Just because, one, it's a Florida-based company, which is really important to me. I, I like to support local, and they're a local brand, and they treat me really well. They're great when it comes to just um, customer experience and service, and their, their product's phenomenal. The board that I ride, so I have a 12-foot Rackham. The Rackham is nice because it is their flagship fishing board. It has everything that I need it to do when it comes to fishing um, and adventuring long paddles. I can put plenty of stuff on there if I need to, but it's just a platform that is optimal when it comes to fly fishing. Um, they also make a 14 footer. I like the 12 footer because it's just a little bit smaller and it's a little bit lighter. It weighs 48 pounds, so I can pick it up super easy and drag it or put the wheels on it and bring it to places maybe a little bit farther than I wanna walk, um, or I can just pick it up and go too. And the, four, the 14 footer too, it's a little bit harder to maneuver in the mangrove. So when I'm in like in tight spaces, I want to be able to have a board that I can get into smaller spots if, if need be. Um, in terms of the board itself and what I have on it, I don't really have anything on it. Uh, the only accessories that I'm going to have are going to be, and this is by far, I think the most important accessory to have on the board. It is a pair of the side bite fins. So on a Rackham, there are four spots to put these in. So you're gonna want all four. The nice thing about this is that every board that you buy from Boat comes with a paddle and a fin in the, in the board, of course. The issue with the fin that it comes with, it's a 10 inch center fin. And for most fly fishermen, and especially me, I'm, I'm fishing in less than 10 inches. I mean, I'm getting super skinny. So you take that fin out and then you put in the, these four of the side bite fins and that's essentially going to let you float in two inches of water, which is awesome. I mean, you can literally go in nothing and get to fish that probably haven't seen baits in a while. Um, the only other accessory that I have with it is going to be the sand spear from boat. And the reason why I want that is because I need to, I need to stop. So that, that's kind of my setup when it comes to the, the boat board. The other reason why I do like the Rackham too is on the front of the Rackham, and you can look it up, you can come in the shop and check it out, or you can look at pictures of it online. Um, it has essentially like a gunnel on the, on the front of the board. The nice thing about that is it keeps my fly line from flying off the sides. So I can strip all my line directly in front of my feet and it will stay there, which is which is really, really cool because the one thing that does suck about that on the paddle board is when you are stripping line and you're not paying attention to where you're stripping line, it will it's gonna fall off the board. Um, so you want to be able to strip it into that gunnel area on the Rackham. And, it, and the nice thing about it, it does stay there. Of course, when it's a little bit windy, it might go in a few other places you don't want it to, but that kind of is gonna go to some of the other points that I have is you want to have less stuff on the board so you don't tangle up on your line and all that stuff. So that's the board that I like to use. And it, it's big enough, it's 32 inches wide, which is another cool thing. I know that it's 32 inches wide, so if I'm measuring a fish, I can lay it on the width of the board and know like, hey, okay, so this, is, this fish is 32 plus, it's 30 inches, it's somewhere around there, so I don't have to have a ruler on it. Um, Paddleboard, paddleboard fishing though, and we can, since my setup is simple, like I was saying, you, you want it to be simple. The nice thing about fly fishing off a paddleboard is you can, as opposed to wading or on a boat, wading, you, you can see a decent amount around you, but on a paddleboard, you are the highest point around you on the water. So you can see a lot, which is nice. You're essentially on your own platform as kind of like a technical skiff, 
a little bit bigger, a little bit more surface area, and you're gonna make a little bit more noise, which is kind of where the paddleboard is a little bit better in a sense of being super quiet. Um, but the paddleboard, you're going to be standing over everything, and you can see pretty much everything around you, which is which is another reason why I like to fish off of my paddleboard because it keeps me higher and up out of the water. So um, those are just a few things that I like to have with me when it comes to the board itself and the setup of the board um, and why I, I, why I choose the paddleboard fish. Um, one, of the, one of the other questions that I, I get in the shop a lot is, okay, so you, know, you, you probably have a whole bunch of stuff with you. you know, you're gonna carry a lot of different items. No. Um, there's the three things that I brought up in the beginning, the, the ease of it, you know, essentially the, the waterproof and the quietness of it. And that's where I'm gonna kind of get into my, my next point with it is, when I like to fish on the paddleboard, I wanna keep it easy. I, I don't wanna bring a lot of stuff with me. Um, I want it to essentially have everything in one pack. And I'll, I'll be honest, don't take my advice on this, but sometimes I don't even bring water, which probably isn't the best idea. Um, you're, you're in water. Yeah, I am in water, so I can just drink it, right? Yeah. Um, no. Osmosis. Yeah, osmo yeah, yeah. Re isn't that reverse osmosis? No, that's the other way. Oh, the other way? Okay, that's all right. The stuff comes out. Ah. Stuff comes ah, okay. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> bring water with you. Don't listen to me. But I like to, if I do bring water, I like to keep it in a very small pack. You should have brought a um, uh, magnifier. Oh, I should have. Gosh dang it. That's fine. Um, that's okay. Next time. Well, no, because that will get caught in your fly line. That's why that's why I don't bring it is because it's right where the gunnels are. So it, you know, it would get. What do you want? Do, do you want to deal with it being parched, or do you want to deal with? It? Yeah, I'd rather be dehydrated okay. than and catch a like yeah okay. and catch a fish than not dehydrated and not catch a fish. Yeah, it's it's the thing. It's the small things in life. Um, <laughs> but no packs. So this is the fish pond small pack, and this is the the waiter belt. I, I took the belt off. The reason why is because that's just one extra thing that your fly line or whatever is gonna get gonna get caught on, and I don't like that. Where you put it? I literally so what I do with this is, and I have a Yeti Sidekick, so it's about the same size. This one's a little bit nicer. I'll put this in between my feet, or behind me. The Rackham has like these like tie downs almost. They're like little bungees. I'll put it in there. I don't want anything to be in my fly line, so that's why I use this, and I put it either between my feet. Or behind me. Do you tie a leash to it or anything? I do not. No, I don't tie a leash to it. I don't. I, and again, it might not be the best option, but that's what I do. And I, I've only, I don't even know if I've fallen in actually before. I, I, I take that back. I've fallen in once, and I was just had like a moment, and I just like freaked out, and I was like, Gah! and I just fell in. It was like a Biden airplane stand. It was. It was like a Biden. Yeah, it was like the Biden Roomba. Um, it just like I just like literally like I don't know what happened. I was just standing there, and all of a sudden, I just fell. And I was in the water, and I'm like, gosh, dang it, what just happened? Um, no, but this is like the perfect size for a pack that you want on the paddleboard. And you could, too, put, say you just wanted to keep this up off the board, you could put the strap on this, and you can wear it around your, your uh, waist. And it would just be essentially like a big, like a bigger fanny pack, and you can keep everything up on top. Okay. Um, with this, of course... Make sure if you have any questions on anything that I've said so far, put a question in the chat. Um, let me see what you got. Ask some questions. I don't know if there are any. Let's see. There's none. Okay, that's okay. Um, but this is the ideal size for me when it comes to a pack that I'm going to have on my paddleboard fly fishing setup. All right. Nice thing about that too is it's going to be waterproof, and that goes to the other point that I had is making sure things aren't going to get destroyed. Um, next thing, fly rod and reel. So typically when it comes to my fly rod, and, and this is where it, it's funny when Alex and I, we, we've talked a lot about fly setups and the ideal weight. And a lot of people nowadays are like, well, eight weight is, is perfect for everything you need. Seven weight is perfect for everything you need. And I, and I agree for sure, for the most part. I would say the paddleboard though is a little bit different. This is where I like to use a nine weight. Boom. And this is the new Hardy Marksman. I love Hardys. I use the, for just right now, this is a four piece, but I use the one piece. Reason why is because a little bit stronger, a little bit lighter, and it's shorter too. 
Um, I like the shorter rod, especially if I'm casting along mangroves. And also, too, it's a little bit easier to bring that fish to me whenever I'm actually fighting them. The, the few extra inches less than that rod is, it's, it's easier to kind of bring that and pull that fish to you. Reel. You have to have a sealed reel. If you don't have a sealed reel, your reel is going to get destroyed. Um, I have used my Everglades before, and I dropped in the water, and I cried a little bit. Um, it was okay. I saved it, but... From now on, I've always used a T-Bore Signature, and that's kind of my standard reel when it comes to paddleboard fishing. Uh, the reason, oh, we got a, we got a question? There's a couple signatures back there. Oh yeah, there are, there's like a whole bunch, yeah. Um, those are seven eights though. I like the nine ten. A little more pickup, I'm using a nine weight. It just feels right. Um, it, it's funny, when I first started it, I never used my nine weight. It was kind of just like a throwaway, like I just had it just because it was cool. And now literally that's the only setup that I bring out there. Um, and it works well. It lets me throw pretty much every fly that I need to. Um, I've never seen a difference with smaller flies versus bigger flies. It, it just feels good. And, and I think that's where like the Hardy definitely um, excels because it, it, is a, it is a great, great, great rod. Um, and the, the reel is awesome too. I mean, I've, I've dunked that signature multiple times now and it is still totally fine. Um, line, I use, I use Bonefish Tapers on it because it is a faster rod. So I want to be able to get line out as quickly as possible. Also, too, I want to be able to be quiet, and that's where the bonefish taper comes in into play because it is a lighter taper and it, it lays a lot lighter because it's made for bonefish. You want to be you want to be quiet out there. Um, so that would be the setup that I'm pretty much going to be using all the time. Pliers, I never leave without a pair of titanium pliers. I was fortunate to be gifted a pair of these van stalls. These are the six inch um, a couple years ago. They're the best pliers ever. I, I love them so much. Um, they are they are pricey, but the nice thing about them is that they are full titanium and they have brass insides and that's kind of makes them different from all the other titanium pliers out there. Nothing is going to go wrong with this. And when everything on the paddleboard is getting wet, this is something I don't have to worry about. If you don't want to break the bank though and get a pair of titanium pliers, we have our ti we have titanium pliers, don't we, Adam? We do. We do. Our own titanium pliers. They're only ninety nine bucks. Yeah, that's cheap. Which is a steal. I love them. They're they're great. They're great. Um, so let's move into more of the actual. We talked about the setup. We've talked about kind of what I use, why I use it. Now we can kind of get into a little more specific and talk about flies, what I'm looking for how I fish um, and, and stuff like that. So typically I'm going to be using smaller flies. flies. Right now on, in the bay, I, I love to target redfish and that's probably going to be the thing that I'm gonna be targeting most of the time on the paddle board just, just because it, it's a challenge to me. I'm not saying that snook is easy because it's not, but I really do enjoy s casting at tailing redfish and seeing them mudding and just sliding it's it's really really cool um so these are f a few flies that i've actually caught a lot of good fish on lately so this is one of the one and only dave zippy flies so this is his little i think it's the critter crab i think he calls it um it's kind of like a, a uh, strong arm yeah strong arm boy sponge boy me bob um i like this one though because it is a little bit smaller and it lands super light Thing about the paddleboard is you want to be quiet and you don't want to know they, you don't want the fish to know that you're there and that's one thing I, I think that changes like waiting and being on a boat is the fact that the arm critter the arm critter there we go um, that you can you can get to fish a lot closer on a paddleboard than just about anything else because they literally are so quiet I mean it's it's crazy I've literally ran over the backs of like redfish and snook and they didn't even know I was there. Um, so you want to be you want to be quiet out there. So something like that has been working really really well. It's it's a great fly. Um, I've been doing really really good with this style, um, and I've caught a lot of caught a lot of big fish on it actually. That picture I think in the front of the of the live the live chat when we started was on a similar fly, but it was black, just like this, and I've been crushing the bigger redfish on these. They've been they've been doing really 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 well with that with that fly um another one i like to throw in the mix too because it's super fun is topwaters it's something you get a reaction bite on i you've probably maybe seen some of my other videos if i'm not fly fishing i'm throwing artificials 
and there's only one lure that I throw. It's the Yozuri Top Knock Pencil. I love to fish top water. So if I can do that on a fly, I mean, why wouldn't I? Um, so those are a few flies that I'm going to be using um, pretty much year round in the bay. I would say fish are similar in the bay as opposed to the inter intercoastal. I just think they act a little bit different. Um, the redfish in the bay, the snook are pretty much the same. I mean, snook or snook. But the redfish in the bay are definitely different. They move a little bit more. There's less grass for them to tail on. So they're going to be a little more active, a little bit more moving around. So a lot of people kind of equate them to like a bonefish. They kind of say that they're very similar to a bonefish in the way that they act. I mean, I guess you could you could say that. Um, so you, you definitely want to be a little bit more active and you have to get that fly in front of them. And you really, they, they need to know it's there and using like cr crustacean patterns and stuff like this, um, I've noticed a big, big change in my hookup ratio on fish and really paying attention to what those fish are feeding on um, has made a huge difference in in my, uh, my hookup ratio and, and actually catching fish in the bay, which it's pretty difficult to catch redfish in the bay to begin with. Um, so if I catch, you know, one while I'm out, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Um, so those are some of the flies that I'm using. So let's go to what I'm typically looking for and doing on the paddle board. So I, um, the nice thing about the paddle board is you can get super shallow. So normally I'm going to be fishing you know, outgoing, low tide. I want to get to I want to get to fish that typically other people aren't fishing for. Or they can't fish for because it's just it's frankly too skinny for them to get to. Um, so I, I typically put in in places that are very shallow um, that boats can't get to, and I think that's where the paddleboard excels in when it compared to like a boat. If you're wade fishing, of course, you can get to them. You know, you just got to walk out. Um, but the nice thing about the paddle board is that you can actually stand up over everything and, and see it. Um, so typically going for those low, like super, super low tides going out to them and actually being able to see them. So that, that's, that's super nice. Um, in terms of leaders, leaders, I'm using lighter leaders, especially for the redfish snook. You know, normally snook are pretty much the same. I'll use a nine foot, 12 to 16 pound taper leader with a 25 pound tippet um, and call it a day, just because you need, you need that. Um, but for redfish, it's definitely different. I'm going to probably be using longer leaders and that's the same for really any type of fishing. It doesn't change when it comes to the paddle board or, or being on a, on a technical skiff. Um, I'm going to be using, you know, 10 or 12 foot liters at 10 pound, you know, some lighter stuff. And my tippet, I really have been liking the, that ultra premium fluoro from Cortland. Um, it works really well and it's super thin. And, uh, I, I don't know the X. Like 17.3 Yeah, it's the 17.3. I think they do a 12.6 too. And I've, I've used that as well. Like zero X, I think, or is it 17? I don't know. Whenever people ask me that, it's like, well, what's the X? I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I know the pound, but I know, I don't know the X. Um, that's like, for me, like, I think that's, it's like trout stuff, right? Like the X, the one X oh, and the, and the two X. Forcers. Yeah. Like, no, it's hemostats. hemostats yeah, yeah. Hemostats. So yeah. There we go. One X. Yep. That's the one I use. Um, I've, it's, it's funny. A captain that comes in the shop all the time, he mentioned that to me because I told him I was having issues catching redfish. I was telling him what I was using. And in fact, I was using flies that he, he tied for me or recommended but I still wasn't catching fish. He's like, well, what, what leaders are you using? And I'm like, well, I'm using, I don't know. I'm using like 20 and 25 pounds. He's like, oh, well, that's why. He's like, you gotta, you gotta bump it down. You gotta go really, really light. And the, immediately, I'm not even joking. That was that one, remember that one fish that I caught and I called you, I think I called you and I was like freaking out. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I bumped it down. I think it was like the 17 or the 12 and I immediately hooked up. And ever since then, I've been consistently. That wasn't a fish in the, in the picture no Sunday, no that, this was a little bit before it um and i it, i still have had like a learning curve since that fish but i've been doing a little bit better um but yeah that that was one thing for me is going down on leaders especially on the paddleboard because you can get so close to them that like literally sometimes those fish will eat right at the board and having a having a lighter leader that they can't see has been a has been a huge help um one thing I've noticed too about fishing on a paddleboard that really changed kind of my whole perspective with it is the quiet aspect to it. So 
we know, like I said, you have to have stuff that's waterproof. Get a waterproof bag. Make sure, you know, bring water probably. That's probably a good idea. Don't listen to me about not bringing water. Um, having a neat and organized board, not having a lot of stuff, the simplicity, but the quiet aspect to it, that's probably been the biggest, the biggest change for me in terms of catching fish. So early on, I, I would get excited and I would, the way that I, the way that I normally fish is my setup is I'll have my paddle and my sand spear in between my legs. Okay. And then I'll have my rod in my hand. And the nice thing about that is I'm sitting there. It's easy. The only thing you have to worry about in that aspect is the lot, your fly line getting caught up on your paddle or your sand spear. So sometimes I'll kind of move it to the left or the right, and get it out of the way. But one, one thing that would always happen to me is I'm paddling and I see fish and I would go down to pick my, my rod up and I would drop my paddle and it would make like the smallest little bang and that fish would be gone. And for the longest time, it would drive me crazy because I'm like, why, can't, why can't, am I spooking these fish all the time? I thought I was quiet, but I really wasn't. So one thing I do now is I hold my, I'm left-handed and I reel with my right. I'm a, I'm a weirdo. Yeah, weirdo. Um, yeah, I'm like the only, I think I'm the only person in the world that does it. Fish yeah, and that I don't do it correctly. But so I hold my rod and my fly in my left hand and I, what I do is I, I pinch my, my line, my fly like this. So I'm pretty much ready to go. I can cast at any moment. And then I take my paddle in my right hand and I push. How much line do you leave out of your rod tip? Um, normally my leaders are probably about 12 feet all together, something along there. And then I'll keep a couple inches of fly line out so I can, you know, that's the one thing about skiffs though, is skiffs, you can have more fly, fly line out mm -hmm. um, on a paddleboard. You cannot, because you need a little bit less because you can't drag that all the time around you. So what is that? It's probably 12 and a half feet, something like that. I'll say give or take of line out so I can cast pretty quickly. Well, like from rod tip to fly not like actual like fly line yeah yeah okay. yeah probably like 12 and a half feet plus a couple inches of yeah line. yeah just just enough to where i can punch it out pretty quick and normally i'll strip out probably i mean you're not making huge long casts on the on the paddle board so probably 30 feet 40 feet you know something like that um but so i have rod in left hand paddle in right hand and i will push myself around with my paddle the reason why I do this is because that transition before of me picking my rod up and putting my paddle down, that's like a split second for that fish to move or spook. So what I'll do is if I see a fish, I'll just keep my head up, put my paddle down super, super slow. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll put my, my pack up on the front of the board and have that paddle rest on it so it makes less noise, which is pretty smart. That took me a while to figure that out. Um, so I make less noise and it's a little bit easier for me to put it down and then I'll cast that fish. Um, I don't, I don't bring the, or I don't use the sand spear as much as I used to because I'm super shallow and the sand spear can sometimes kind of bang around the, the hole in the board and make a little bit of noise. I normally use the sand spear if I'm fishing like a deeper, you know, cut or something like that and I need to really hold myself down. Um, normally I'll just push the paddle first before I stop, just to kind of slow me down and then put the paddle down. The next point that I've noticed is, so I've kind of figured out how to be quiet in that sense. What I did notice I was doing though, was whenever I was casting, I was like shifting my feet, like from the left to the right and kind of like just jostling the board. And that little tiny, tiny ripple would freak the fish out because I'm so close to them and they'd spook off. So I've been really, really cognizant of not moving my feet and just staying ridiculously still and making a cast. And more often than not, if I pay attention to those few things when it comes to fishing on the paddleboard, I, I typically hook up and I catch fish because they don't even know I'm there. I mean, it, it's pretty crazy, like again, how close I can get to fish on it and them not even notice. Um, and, and I would say that that's where that's where the paddleboard excels and the fact that I can get into pretty much no water. I can paddle in no water. They can't, they can't feel me or see me if I stay still and I'm up over everything. I can see everything. So that's kind of why I, I like to cast. like to do it. Yeah, Casting for that. So you're not rocking back and forth as much. Yes. Um, so normally what I, what I do with casting is I've 
trained myself to not really move my lower body at all. Did you finish that? You got a question? I do have a question. Okay, sweet. Um, so I, I, I've trained myself to not move my feet and that's going back to like, you know, shifting my feet up and down or left to the right. I literally, whenever I cast, I mean, it's very quick and, and I guess you could say kind of slow, quick and slow, but essentially making it to where I all that I'm moving is my upper body and I'm not moving my lower body. Cause if I move my lower body, I'm going to move the board and I'm probably going to spook the fish. So that's one thing I've just paid attention to. And in a few other videos that we've done before, I've, I've talked about like, I like super fast rods. So I like to get line out as quickly as possible. That's another thing too, is less false cast, less back cast. I mean, if you can get line out in one or two casts, you know, that's ideal when it comes to fishing off the paddle board because you want to get that line out quick so that fish doesn't uh, freak out. Um, but let's, what, what kind of question do we have? We got a question from John. Uh, John, uh, catch and release question mark. If you keep, you bring a bucket with ice. Um, I don't keep any fish in shore. Um, never have. Well, I take that back. I've kept like a few trout before when I was fishing with like Andrew and Alex. Um, all, all of my fishing inshore now is catch and release. Um, the only, the only fish that I really keep when it comes to inshore, and I guess you could say it's inshore is triple tail. Um, I'll keep one a year maybe because they're, they're just delicious. Um, but I guess, I mean, if I was, if I was to keep fish, what I'd probably do is I would bring like a five gallon bucket with ice in it and I would turn that into a seat so I can sit on it and take up less space and then throw fish in there if I wanted to, but I, I never, I never keep any fish. Um, I've always thought about like what would happen if I ran into like a 40, you know, like 40 pound Kobe or something on that thing. Like, what would I do? Like, I would just have to jump on it probably. That'd be good. Just wear his like studs. Like, yeah. And just, stuff. and just suck it up. Yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I wouldn't, I'd probably release that too. Um, uh, what, what's your other question, John? Uh, how far generally is the fishing spot from the drop in spot? How That's far are you? Code having to paddle. That is a cheat code. Um, so I'm very fortunate living in Safety Harbor. Um, <coughs> it's typically the drop-in spot is, you know, a couple hundred yards away from where I'm fishing. I don't like to paddle very far. I've done it before. It, sucks. it does suck. The only, the only time I ever paddle far is if I have literally the entire day, like I have nothing on the, on the schedule. I can go from sunup till sundown and not have to worry about being home because Sometimes what happens is the wind picks up and your freaking hour trip turns into a five hour excursion. Brandon. Yeah. Um, Adam, myself and Brandon once got stuck. Well, when I say Brandon, he was on a boat. Adam and I were on a, on our paddle boards and literally like we were fishing this Creek catching these redfish. And then all of a sudden it was like a hurricane that had popped up. Well, we didn't know. No, we were because like, we were in the Creek. Yeah. yeah. We get out of the creek and it's blowing what like forty miles an hour and we had to go back into it. Yeah, it was the worst. So if typically if I'm if I'm using the paddle board, like literally like I drop the board in like right at the end of my street and I, I paddle maybe half a mile. Maybe. So I'm not going far. I, I like to make it easy on me, um, if I can. If if I can't then I'm dedicating the whole day and I will bring water then. Um <laughs> so I don't die. Um yeah, some beef jerky. Yeah, just so just so I can like make sure that like I have plenty of time to either wait out a storm, wait out a wind, and I've done that before too. I've I've sat in the mangroves and just sat there and just waited for it Dude, to die down. I remember, Tate called me one time and yeah. paddled into the canal and hid underneath the dock. Yeah, I mean sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Like I remember, um, I was fishing the outflow and a storm popped up, and I literally what I did was I backed the paddleboard in to the mangroves and just sat there and just waited for, for a storm to come through. And then I, then I paddled out. Uh, but that's a good question. Yeah. Um, try to make it easy on you so you can dedicate more of your time and energy to fishing and not paddling. So, um, yeah. I'm trying to think of anything else in terms of, that's pretty good. Do you yeah. know, like fly box? Oh no. I mean, I typically, so I use this pack of course, but I, I should have grabbed one. That was one thing I totally forgot. I use the Umqua, um, the bait fish, like the LT bait fish ones. Tray. Yeah, it's like the little like, you know, and they're, they're waterproof as well. So they keep everything nice. No, it's not like an insert. It's just like an open tray kind of. No, it's an insert. Okay. Yeah, it's the foam. Yeah. Um, and I just, I load that thing up with as many flies as possible just because I don't want to bring two boxes. Um, 
and I bring thing a thing a liter, an extra pack of um, a, a pack of liter, a pack of tippet, and my fly box and pliers, and that's literally it. Yeah, uh, yeah, loaf of milk, stick of butter, <laughs> yeah, and a Joder DVD. Yeah. <laughs> um, again, I, I like to make it as as simple for me, so I don't forget anything. I don't need anything extra. Um, I've done in the past, I've done like excursions where I've brought like multiple rods and a cooler and it's fun, it's fun. but it's just a lot. And I, I don't like to do it because it just, it, it's just more things to fall in the water. Um, it's more things that you can break and step on. So I normally just kind of do this. And when I, when I'm on, and this is a totally other side, but when I'm spin fishing, I literally, all that I bring is a, is a pencil. That's it. I don't bring anything else. Because you call it quits if you break off. I do, yeah, no, like if I if I break off, I just go back because I don't want to have to worry about it, and like I dedicate to my time to that pencil, like I make sure like that's the only thing that I can catch a fish on. So, um, yeah, I think that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Hope you all liked it, and hope you learned something too. Um, just so you know, we do. If you if you're in town or you are close to the shop, we're running a sale on hardboards right now. They're thirty five percent off. Um, so that's pretty much as cheap as you're ever going to find a new paddle board. So if you are seriously thinking about it or considering it, um, give us a call or stop by and I can kind of lay out the whole, um, the whole kind of lineup that boat has to offer and what you would get out of like a flood an HD or a rack um, and what would kind of fit your, your, your style of what you want to use it for. Um, and it, it is fun. If you, if you ever have the opportunity to try one, go out and use it. Um, cause you will fall in love with, with fishing off of it. It, it is really fun. So yeah. Thanks for listening everybody. They watch, they watch too. Oh, they watched. Yeah. They watched too. Yeah. Have a podcast. Oh yeah. You're right. Yeah. We do have a podcast. Um, yeah, it's called fishing as a simulation and it's Andrew and I talking about weird things. So the first part of it's fishing related, and then the second part is conspiracies and Andrew and I going crazy and talking about megalodons and Bohemian Grove and aliens and Bigfoot and all that stuff. So if you're into something like that, um, subscribe to it. Fishing is a simulation. It's really fun. We wear funny hats too, which is nice. Um, and we're going to have a uh, retired Coast Guard colonel on the next one to talk about the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, he's an expert. He is an expert, yes, because he's flown in it. So I'm an expert. He might have a flight helmet too. He might have Maybe. a flight helmet. Yeah, Maybe. yeah. I'm an amateur cryptozoologist, so I'm in. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> just I'm reiterating it though. So, yeah. Well, thanks for watching.